Let's go places. By the Georgia Lottery, today could be the day. And by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Welcome back to Fenway Park after a long delay. It will be 100 minutes officially once we get this thing started. We are ready for baseball. The Boston Red Sox and the Atlanta Braves getting set to do battle. Brandon Garden, Tom Glavin up here in the booth. Kelly Krull down on the field. Well, let's get you the Braves lineup presented by your local Toyota dealer. It's a familiar looking lineup. Ronald Acuna, the Albies, Austin Riley, the top three. And Sean Murphy back behind the dish after getting the day off. Obviously, everyone got the day off yesterday. Sean got the day off game three of the series as well against Milwaukee. Well, it's going to be a bullpen day for Boston. John Schreiber, his first career start, they only expect him to go an inning, Tom, maybe two. Yeah, it's going to be a Harvey Holstaff tonight for the Red Sox. You see his numbers on the year, three career, career outings versus Atlanta, three scoreless innings, four strikeouts. Pretty good though in his last 35 outings dating back to last year a 191 ERA. So when he's been out there he's been good he's just not going to be out there very long. Those city connect uniforms for Boston the yellow and blue that pays tribute to the Boston Marathon. Those are the colors of the Boston Marathon and so that is what they are wearing here this evening. And Tom what do you have for the Ford keys here tonight. Well, what did I have? It was so long ago when I put these down. <laughs> I, need, I need a reminder. Keep rolling. Charlie Morton's been good. Five and one in his last seven. Really good against the Red Sox. And patience offense. You're going to see a lot of different guys tonight. Be patient out there. Trust the scouting report and have a plan. So the off day yesterday for both of these teams. Boston won a series here this weekend against the Mets. They stay here at home. The Braves winning a series in Milwaukee. Headed out here on Sunday night. Day off yesterday and ready for baseball this evening. These two teams split a pair of games in Atlanta May 9th and 10th Atlanta won on May 9th 9 to 3 Boston got the equalizer on the 10th 5 to 2. And now two games here at Fenway Park to polish off the regular season series. Acuna first pitch lifted to right center pretty well struck but the ballpark will hold it. And Duvall's got it for the first out. And that will bring up Ozzie Albies, who was the hero in game three in Milwaukee with a three run homer in the eighth inning. Yeah, an otherwise forgettable series up there for Ozzie, but he made the one count. Was his first homer since July 4th. And here he takes a fastball right down the middle. Fastball slider predominantly for Schreiber. Mixes a four seamer and sinker. Ooh, ouch. That one hit the back foot of Ozzy. That was a slider. And Ozzy will try to jog it off down to first base. Yeah, just overcooked that one a little bit. That hurts. Those, those ones that you get in the feet and the ankle. That doesn't feel good. Mm. It looked like it hit him right around that ankle bone. Yeah, I was just trying to walk it off a little bit. See, back in the day, they would have had some of that cold spray put on <laughs> that thing. Ozzy tried to give it a little kiss there and be on his way. And now Austin Riley digs in here against John Schreiber. And a fastball right down the middle. Well this Red Sox team they've had injuries to their rotation so these bullpen games have been frequent. This is actually the tenth time in the last 31 games that they're going with a bullpen game as opposed to a traditional starter. Yeah they really have had to do it out of necessity. Pretty much three starters for the last almost two months for the Red Sox so this. It's not like they're trying to fill one slot. They're trying to fill two, which is not easy. 
They have been scoring runs but the pitching has been a little bit of an issue the starting pitching in particular however they've been playing good ball in the month of July they're 12 and 5 this month. Yeah best record in baseball here this month. And this guy's been playing some good baseball this month as well in Austin Riley. Checked out at first but Ozzie is back in time. In fact Austin with the six homer week. He is the National League player of the week and deservedly so. Yeah for sure he's been hot. The count runs full as that slider misses away from Schreiber. You're talking about the Red Sox being hot in July. Won seven of their last eight games here at Fenway, outscoring their opponents 53 to 29 in that span. Ozzy breaks for second as the 3 2 is fouled away. Yeah, the problem for the Red Sox is the division that they're in. Even though they're six games over 500, the Orioles have a nine game lead. Yeah, they've, uh, you know, as we talked about, they haven't necessarily made up any ground on Baltimore, but they've certainly made some ground in the wild card race. Yeah, they're two and a half back there. Alex Cora, skipper since 2018. Another payoff pitch as he goes again and there's a single to left off the bat of Austin Riley and since Ozzy started his wheels he will cruise into third and the Braves in business. Yeah fastball up and in not where Schreiber was trying to go but still a tough pitch to hit but Austin strong as he is able to fight it off his hands and. When you're going good, those are base hits. So the National League Player of the Week puts runners at the corners, and now the National League home run and RBI leader, Matt Olson, steps up. In the first game this year against Boston, the Braves jumped out to a four to nothing lead. And that game started by Ronald Acuna singling and then Matt Olson coming up and hitting a homer in the first inning on May night the truest part. That one misses downstairs a slider makes it two and oh. So the 112th career game for John Schreiber first ever start for the 29 year old. And his 2 0 pitch is on the outside corner. No. 3 1 with Sean Murphy lurking. Red Sox already have Nick Pavetta in the pin. They expect him to come on next inning and work a lion's share of today's game. That's a walk and the bases are loaded. They're going to have a meeting. In the center of the diamond right now the Braves with a big opportunity here in the first. Well we know I'll know how good the Braves have been in the first inning. Red Sox pretty good team too in the first innings in terms of scoring runs so this would be big for the Braves to cash in here and get an early lead on the road. The Braves 100 runs this year in the first inning. And that leads Major League Baseball and Sean Murphy has a chance to tack on here in the first inning of Fenway Park. Well we've seen a lot of fastballs out of Schreiber so far his command of that pitch has not been great. We all know Sean loves that first pitch so. See if Schreiber goes to something else goes to that slider here in that first pitch. He did not. He did not. Fastball's right there at the knees, 0 1. 
Perfect pitch there. Best pitch he's thrown. A brave at every base after a 100 minute rain delay here to start the two game series. Down and in. A ball and a strike from Schreiber. Murphy to the left side and through. Only one will score, but the Braves doing what the Braves do, jumping out in front of the first inning. First pitch fastball was down and in. Good location. Murph couldn't do much with it. That one up. And Sean's not going to miss too many of those. 58th run driven in for Sean Murphy on the season and now the base is still loaded for the D.H. Marcelo Zuna. Well you think about it for Schreiber he just got activated today He's on the I.L. since May 16th with a shoulder strain and the Braves are greeting him rudely. Yeah, maybe not the best offense to face your first time back out in a while, but. <laughs> oh, Ozuna was all over that. Look out in the seats. Well, went to a Braves fan. There's a lot of them here tonight. There are. Walking in, saw a ton of Braves shirts and jerseys. One one. Nowhere near. Schreiber's a guy who last year had a breakout season out of the pen for Boston, and that's the role he's in this year. But with that injury, been on the 60 day IL since the middle of May, and now resurfacing today on the roster. Gets a generous strike call there from Eric Backus. Yeah, a little bit down and out of the zone. Three two and there is nowhere to put Marcelo Zuna. Well it's going to be mano a mano here I would think. Zuna such a good fastball hitter. And he crushes it but it's lined into the glove of Arroyo. Well no they're going to say it bounced. And now on the throw that gets wide to first base the Braves get a run home. And everybody is safe. Now yeah, Royal's trying to claim he caught that ball. I did not think he caught that ball. Now the umpire and crew is getting together here. Some confusion in the top of the first. I don't think he caught it. For the moment it's two to nothing. And everybody is safe. Yeah I don't know what happened on that throw to first. Second base has been a revolving door for Boston this year. They've had tried many people there. Royo's gotten a heavy dose of the starts. And he thought he had made a play in what could potentially be an inning ending double play, but possibly turning into a mess for Boston. Well, this has turned into quite the discussion here. Andy Fletcher, Mike Estabrook, here's a look at it. Oh, he short hopped that. Yeah, one. it looked like it took a mini hop, and clearly 
Well there should be the out at second base regardless because he did touch second and Sean Murphy was over by first base so Sean at least has to be out at second. Yes. And then I don't know what in the world happened on that throw. Well a hundred minute rain delay and now about a five minute umpiring delay here. So what's why, Boy, what's going on with Murph. Uh, I I. OK. All right, I'm completely confused <laughs> now. Keystone cops. Well, now Brian. So I, I don't understand. So if he didn't catch the ball at second base, why Matt Olson is not out? He was a runner at second base. It should have been Murph out at second, no? Well, that would be the third out of the inning anyway. Right? Yeah, yeah. So Murphy okay. was out at second, and then the third out is Olson at third. <laughs> we'll, we'll sort all of it out. We'll be back. What we know is that we're going to the bottom of the first inning. And it's one to nothing Atlanta not two to nothing. And Boston is coming to the plate. And their lineup is presented by your local Toyota dealer. It's a lineup that as we talked about has been pretty productive. The bats have not been the issue. In fact they're fifth in the majors in runs per game at just over five. Per contest. But Charlie Morton was good against him on May 9th and he's had a really solid season Tom. Yeah he sure has. Thrown the ball well been really good lately last nine versus Boston five and oh. With a three four ERA so. He's pitched well against these guys he's pitched really well in his last seven five and one with a two four five. Hopefully he's not confused about what just happened he can focus on pitching because I still don't know. That is one of the strangest plays that I have seen. And there was obviously the long deliberation so there was a lot of confusion confusion amongst the umpires as well. But it is one to nothing. And this is a grounder to Matt Olson. Charlie's got to hurry. And he does beat Duran to the bag for the first out. Just by a half a step. And Duran has a lot of speed. He leads the team with 19 stolen bases, but not quick enough there. And now here's Justin Turner. And Turner takes a strike. 
He has been hot since June 1st. He leads Major League Baseball with 43 runs driven in. He stays hot. Solid single to left. Yeah, he's just a good hitter. Seems to hit everywhere he goes. Had a 15 game hitting streak snap Friday night. 354 in his last 18. And he's at first base with one away. And now Devers coming up here. Today is the anniversary of his major league debut, which he made July 25th of 2017. And he is fooled on that curveball by Charlie Morton. He was just 20 years of age when he debuted in 2017, now 26. Had a tough time, has had a tough time against Charlie. Eight for 34, 235 average with nine strikeouts. I think maybe he was hoping he was going to ambush a fastball that first pitch. He was definitely <laughs> fooled. Took a big swing and got the curve. Fouled off there. Got a piece of Eric Backus, but everybody's okay. It was interesting before the game because the Red Sox were making a last minute move. Kike Hernandez actually got traded to the Dodgers, who he was with for five seasons. And so we didn't get a lineup card until about, gosh, seven o'clock. Yeah, it was super secret lineup night. We had nothing for a while. That one almost hit his back foot. Of course the Braves making their moves on the off day yesterday getting some new pitchers in so both teams kind of in flux and had the rain delay crazy top of the first inning and we're off and running here. Foul back. Two two here from Charlie fouled off. I was getting the explanation from our producer Gretchen Caney on the play that ended the top of the first. They did rule it a line out to second base. Oh they did. They said that Arroyo did not take that off the ground and then Riley was out because the claim is he left early which he clearly did. So they started the play again through over there and tagged him out for the third out. I saw it like you off the replay. It looked like it was a short hop into the glove. Yeah, I didn't. I did not think he caught that ball. And fortunate for Boston, obviously, to only be down one to nothing. And now Devers battling here with Charlie Morton delivering a 2-2 pitch. And the count runs full. Yeah, he's gotten him on that, got him on that back foot slider for strike one, but he's thrown a couple good ones in there since, and Devers isn't biting. With Turner over at first. Quite a battle here, Morton and Devers. Here's that catch, supposed catch. It looked like it bounced there right at the end. Yeah, huh? it did. But they ruled that a line out, that he caught it in the air. And then again, Riley left early, so they tagged him out for the third out of the inning. And another foul ball here. This is another guy that has been hot for Boston as their lineup has been much more successful over the last couple of weeks in July he's driven in 13 10 extra base hits. 
Both third basemen on each of these teams have been hot. He and Austin Riley having fantastic Julys. Line drive by Ozzy. Turner will pump the brakes at second. And Boston trying to get their offense going here in the home half of the first. Well, it's just a quality at bat right there by Devers. Like you said, he's been hot. And you see why. Just battled and battled and battled and got a good pitcher's pitch from Charlie. He's just able to roll over it and get it in the hole. That's one as as a pitcher, Charlie, you just tip your hat right there. That's that's great pitch. Just a really good piece of hitting. You see one of the reasons that they gave Devers a 10 year three hundred and thirteen million dollar extension back in January. He is the new superstar with that big signing. And now the cleanup hitter Masataki Yoshida. Grounds Charlie's first pitch to second. Ozzy's only play is to throw it to first base. There are two away with two in scoring position. Good pitch there by Charlie. Runner in scoring position. Take advantage of the hitter's aggressiveness. Give him a good curveball, weak ground out. And now he has to deal with a former Atlanta Brave. Spent most of the last five seasons wearing a Braves uniform. He missed the first series in Atlanta, was on the I.L. with a fractured left wrist. But he returned June 9th and batting fifth here tonight. Downstairs with a curveball, 2-0. Good take there by Duvall. That's a good pitch. Turner at third, Devers at second, two away. And it's 3 0. Oh. First base open. Casas would be next. Charlie fires and it's a four pitch walk and they're loaded up. And now you're going to get the 39 year old veteran pitching to the 23 year old rookie. Yeah, another guy that's been hot for the Red Sox. Last 28 games, 348 average, seven homers, 17 RBI. Charlie gets the call there. Let's see if he can cool down this young rookie. Saturday against the Mets in that tear that you mentioned, he hit two homers off Max Scherzer in an eight to six Boston win. Touch outside, one and one. When Casas did that, he became the first rookie ever to hit two homers off of Max Scherzer, and Scherzer is in his 16th major league season. Another good take. They know they have to be disciplined on that Charlie Morton curveball. 2 1. Gets the strike call there on the curve to even the count. Now, Eric Backus seems to be calling low strikes tonight.
It's early but this is a big pitch. Base is loaded 2 2. And now an even bigger pitch coming up. Well it's Charlie's bread and butter. You assume you throw it 2 2 you got to throw a 3 2. And Charlie's going to step off maybe having trouble hearing the pitch comm device. Well credit this crowd which is usually great here they waited through the raindrops and it's a packed house over thirty eight thousand. Pitch foul back and out of play. Yeah, along with the fastball. Over 1,800 career strikeouts for Charlie Morton, and if he could get Casas here, boy, that would be a big one. 3 2 again. Just missed. Ball game tied as Turner trots home. And out comes Rick Kranitz. Yep, tried to throw the backdoor breaking ball. Didn't quite get it back. Another good at bat. Well Charlie's first start against Boston this year on May 9th as Tom referenced earlier six innings just two runs struck out seven was really solid and the Braves cruise to a 9 3 victory but running into a little bit of trouble here at the bottom of the first inning. That was the first time that Charlie Morton had walked a man with the bases loaded since 2018. Hmm. Christian Arroyo now. First pitch, it's fair. Austin is never going to get him. And it's two to one. Yeah, did a nice job by Austin getting to that ball, but with a, all the rain we've had, grass is wet. See how much he slides there trying to get to his feet, and no chance. So an RBI single for Christian Arroyo to put Boston out in front. First pitch, Connor Wong swings at his late on a fastball. Yeah it was a downpour from about three o'clock until about six o'clock and then it rained intermittently until we were able to get the first pitch going just before nine Eastern here. One and two. Good curveball from Charlie. Connor Wong starting at catcher. He was platooning with Reese McGuire, but he's been on the IL since the middle of June with an oblique strain. So Connor has been getting a lion's share of the starts. Foul tip. That got a piece of Murph. You can tell it hurt, but he's as tough as nails. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's not going to let you know it hurt. 
Struggles with fastballs up. They tried, tried to go up there, didn't quite get it there. And there the curveball away, and that takes care of Connor Wong and the Red Sox, but they do get two to take the lead. Fear not. We've only played an inning and also fear not as we take a look at our Coors Light beating the pressure feature because Atlanta and Boston a lot of comeback wins this season. Yeah you see the Braves with 28 comeback wins this season trailing on the Angels the Reds and the Orioles. Each of their last three wins have been comeback wins and the Braves have 51 home runs in the seventh inning or later. Most in the major in Major League Baseball the Red Sox have 32 and that's why they're never out of a game. That's why you never quit on these guys until the final out is made and this is what we suspected with this bullpen game is Schreiber would go one inning and now Nick Pavetta coming out of the bullpen for Boston Pavetta was struggling earlier this year as a starter they demoted him to the bullpen in May and in that role he's been much better but they expect him to eat up maybe as much as much as five innings tonight Tom yeah I mean I think that's been the M.O. Uh, when he comes in in these openers. As they feel like he's not done what they had kind of hoped or expected for him as a starter, so just change the name. I mean, as a, you know, as a reliever, one inning later, and it seems to be working. <laughs> Sometimes it's funny yep. like that. Facing the bottom three in the Braves' order as Eddie takes a fastball outside. Fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, fastball in the mid 90s. Two and two. Well, an eventful first inning. And if you're wondering why the Braves did not review that possible line drive catch at second by Arroyo, that is not a reviewable play. And I asked why. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you a, know, it's a tough break for Atlanta because it did look like it bounced. This one bounced right into center field off the bat of Eddie Rosario, leadoff single. That curveball didn't quite get the finish he wanted. Finished about thigh high instead of down knee high or below. And Rosario sent it right back where it came from. Yeah, it took Pavetta down to his seat. And now Orlando Arcia has three homers in his last six games. Oh, hello, high and tight. The 30 year old pitcher sets for a 1 0 offering. 
And Orlando deposits that out into left field. Back to back singles to start the second for the Braves. Tom coming into this outing Pavetta had retired 23 batters they were over the last 23 against him with a couple of walks and now the Braves come out here and get two singles off of them. Yeah they weren't the Braves. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's good another hanging breaking ball there. Arcia didn't miss that one. So a chance for the Braves to erase that one run deficit here. Harris with a big cut. Yeah, he likes hunting that fastball first pitch. That one a little too high. And this one fouled off 0 and 2. That's a strike. Harris caught looking. He's down on three pitches, one away. Yep, fastball down and away. Good pitch. I think caught Michael looking for something else, either another elevated fastball or maybe a breaking ball, but 97 in the down and away corner. Get good results in that pitch most times. To show you how good Nick Pavetta has been as of late, he has now struck out 40 of the last 85 batters that he has faced. That's pretty good. That is a high rate. Ronald Acuna fouls it off. It is funny, though, that a guy struggles starting and then you bring him in in the second or third inning and all of a sudden he's Cy Young. I mean, it's just, you know, sometimes it's just a little psychological warfare, you know? I mean, you're not starting anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is weird. I'm with you. He started that May 9th game at Atlanta against Charlie Morton and. That's when Pavetta got demoted to the bullpen. He gave up seven runs in four innings at Truist Park back on May 9th. Swing and a miss, one and two. Uh, he's got great stuff. I mean, you know, good, good, lively fastball, really good breaking ball. I see a nice slider there. So he's got the stuff, and I think that's partly why you scratch your head sometimes and don't quite understand why he doesn't put up some bigger numbers, but. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is his niche. Ronald flew out to start the game last inning. Two two. Bouncer to short. They will get one at second and they'll get two. Now Ronald instantly says you may want to take a look at it. We'll see if the Braves do. I don't think they, I don't think they got him but I'm shocked it was that close. And indeed Atlanta will review it. Oh yeah he's safe clearly. Tell you what, the Braves are wearing out that five hole over there. You got Riley's single over there, Murphy's, Orlando's. Now Ronald hitting it over there. This should not be a long review. No. And this will. After review, the ball in the field is overturned. This will be a good matchup now with Ronald at first. Connor Wong has a good arm, tied for fourth in the majors with 16 caught stealing. 
So this will be fun to watch. And the batter is Ozzy Albies. Ozzy got hit in the first inning. Yeah, Connor Wong's had a nice season for them. And with Reese McGuire, as I mentioned, going down with the injury, he's become an everyday guy. But right now, he's having trouble with a pitch comm device. We got a lot of things going on so far tonight. This is, <laughs> is not there a full moon tonight. That is not setting up for a quick game now that we've got it going. <laughs> And we've seen a little bit of everything, and we're only in the top of the second. All right, well, let's go the old fashioned way. One's a curve, one's a fastball, two's a yeah. curve. Yeah, you can teach them how to do that. Just yeah. throw a hand down there. Yeah. <laughs> Swap it out. Nick says this one works. Both teams scheduled to have an off day on Thursday as well. So it's kind of an interesting week. You have an off day Monday for both these teams, a two game series, and then another off day. But we were speculating before the game had this been washed out would they play Thursday but Boston does have to go out to the West Coast but thankfully it looks like the rain is cleared at least for the time being the way this is going we might still be here playing on Thursday <laughs> <laughs> well Nick Pavetta has a device that's working but Connor Wong is still trying to figure out his technical issues. And if I'm Nick Pavetta, this is the last thing I want right here. First and third, two outs, getting in the groove of the inning, and now you got a delay here. And it's your catcher, so you can't throw any warm up pitches. Yeah, so he just sits and waits. Braves got one in the top of the first. Could have been more. An interesting play. A questionable call on a line out to Arroyo at second that ultimately squashed the Braves rally and then Boston gets two in the bottom half off Charlie Morton. And now a pitch calm delay here in the top of the second. But with a new schedule how it works is you play every team in the other league so the Braves play. He's going to get a couple warm-up tosses here. Every team in the American League for the Braves, they played them three games, but then you have one rival, quote unquote. And for the Braves, that's the Boston Red Sox. And so you get two games with them at home and two on the road. And so that's why the Braves are visiting Fenway here. Yeah, and I think that rivalry, so to speak, has worked out well for both teams. You see a lot of Boston fans when, when Boston's down in Atlanta. You see, like you said, a lot of Braves fans here tonight. Ronald breaks for second and Connor Wong won't throw down Ronald got a great jump and he's in scoring position. Yeah look I mean Ronald not going to waste much time anyway but I think that was a perfect spot right there after all the delays the last thing Pavetta was going to do was be worried about him at first base he wanted to make a pitch and he paid no attention to Ronald. Problem is, it looks like Connor Wong is struggling again with that device. You see, and, and you know, this is if I'm Pavetta right here, I'm saying, let's go. Just let's throw down some fingers and let's get through this inning. I don't want to stand out here anymore. Well, maybe he's got it figured out. So two in scoring position here for Ozzy with two outs.
popped up. Devers will give it a look, but he runs out of room, barely. Ozzy sitting on 69 runs driven in this year. Top five in the National League and a chance to add to it. But he fouls another one off. And now the one two from Nick Pavetta. Inside. Eddie down at third. Orlando, or rather, Ronald out at second. Popped up, and this one will be playable for Casas. So the Braves strand two in scoring position, and we go to the bottom of inning number two. By Truist. Fenway Park, bottom of the second, two to one, Boston. Brandon Gordon, Tom Glab, and Kelly Crow with you as Charlie Morton goes back to work here to face the nine hole hitter, Yu Chang. First pitch, Chang out to center, and Harris drifts back. He's got it. That first inning, Charlie threw 33 pitches. That's the most he's thrown in an inning all season. So right. it's nice to get a one system. pitch out, yeah, right? Exactly, yes. <laughs> and back to the top of the order in Duran. Yeah, if you can have a relatively easy inning here, and obviously off to a good start with one pitch, one out, and you kind of have the pitch count back on track a little bit. Tried to stop his back, could not. Oh and two. Good change up there from Charlie. And Jaron Duran's going to step out. He's having a breakout year. Hitting 315. He had a combined 219 the last two years in Boston. Different this season. Yeah, for a guy who had high expectations but didn't make the team out of spring training and got an opportunity when Duvall got hurt and he hasn't let it go. Takes a fastball high.
And he got called up April 17th with that Duvall injury and has stuck. Tried that curve, bounces it in. Did it hit his foot? Yep. Yes. Home plate umpire Eric Backus sends Jaron Duran down to first base. Now Walt wants to know if it hit him. Sounded like it did. Yeah, they don't want to review it. Yep. Well, good matchup here now too with Murph. Duran loves to run. Yeah, 19 stolen bases. Nobody else on Boston has more than eight, and he's going. There's his 20th of the season. Yeah, he got a huge jump. Veteran move there by Justin Turner. He saw how good a jump Duran got, and he was taken all the way. And it works out for him because it's a ball and a 1 0 count. Lifting this in the air to right center. Duran tags, and he's at third base with two outs. And now Devers. Singleton scored last inning. Strike at the knees. Charlie making his 15th career start against Boston. He has had success against Boston, not only in that start earlier this year, but Charlie is 8 and 1 against the Red Sox all time. Ground ball, Arcia. Great play. Saves a run. The All Star shortstop keeping it a 2 to 1 game. Man, what a play. As that ball was smoked, but Orlando with a beautiful backhand. And a nice throw to first.
the good news, Austin Riley leading things off, and we know he can change that score with one swing of a bat. Fresh off his NL Player of the Week honors, six home runs, 16 RBI in five games, and he said it really boils down to playing free baseball, guys, letting the game come to him, not trying to force things, but did joke, and Tom, I think you could probably talk to this from the pitching perspective. He goes, when you're on a heater, the way you talk to yourself versus when you're in a skid, he goes, it's totally different. Oh, you just missed that, missed that pitch versus, oh, man, you were so far off just now. <laughs> <laughs> He's yep. been really talking himself up lately. The little Digby session. That's heck, what we're calling uh, it, guys. Mean, <laughs> heck yeah. Listen, and, and it's true. I mean, when you're going good, you're you're a lot more patient with yourself. You're a lot more accept, accepting of maybe a mistake here or there. When you're not, man, you are just ruthless on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, he's been able to be kind to himself lately. It's his third player of the week award of his career, the first this season. Fouling back the one two from Pavetta. Yeah it's a little bit harder though for everyday players to. Really enjoy that dig me day you know you got to get back out there <laughs> starting pitcher you can. Yeah you can dig yourself for a while. Yeah after. you got a few days yeah. right. Yeah. But I guess on the flip side of that Tom if you're a starting pitcher and you have a bad day then you've got to sit on that for yeah, a few days. It's a, it's a long <laughs> four days I can promise you. Well, thankfully, you had a lot more good ones than bad ones. Yeah, so, thankfully. You know? Two and two here. Austin sends this back to our right. It went in the press box a couple of rows over. We got a chance up here, partner. Yes. And you realize when you're here how many foul balls back behind home plate just launch right out of the stadium. Uh huh. And one clips the outside corner according to Eric Backus and down goes Austin Riley. Yeah might have got the benefit of the call there. The ball looked like it was a little bit off the plate. Yep. So Austin's one for two. Here's Matt Olson. He walked in the first inning. Hey Kelly, the dig me thing was a story you were originally telling on Matt Olson, right? It was an innocent question to asking Matt. Does he tend to go back and watch when he's maybe in a, a bit of a skid? Video from right then and there, or previously when he felt good at the play, and he said. You know it's a combination of both but really what I've gotten into lately and it was one of his teammates and Kevin Seitzer I think all coming together and they're calling it a dig me day when he goes back to the cage and they are running highlights on a TV <laughs> of all his great balls that he squared up balls that have gone deep majestic home runs and he goes you watch that and you realize hey, I'm pretty decent at this game. <laughs> he said it helped him earlier you know this year when he's kind of in that rut. But, and, uh, and I don't understand why more guys don't do that. Sure. You know I mean I know like for me personally I tried to stay away from video as much as I could because if you go there looking for something you're going to find it. And, and it may not have anything to do with what you're struggling with but psychologically you're like psychologically you're like yeah that's it. So I try to stay away from it but there were times where it's kind of the same thing. I just queue up a tape that just showed me throwing good pitch after good pitch after good pitch and just kind of walk away from something with good feeling. Yeah. You know and sometimes that's as simple as you need. Well he's had a lot to be happy with this year that's for sure two two to Matt three and two. And what you're saying it's not arrogance it's just probably reminding yourself hey I can do this. No I mean at the end of the day you know we all need to be reminded every now and then that, you know what you're a good player <laughs> because we do tend to focus so much on the negative side of things. Three two Olsen bounces it to Arroyo and there are two outs. And now Sean Murphy.
RBI single for Sean Murphy in the first inning such a great year so many Braves are having but think about his numbers and then figure in that he's only played 72 games out of the 99 this year for Atlanta. Yeah it was so good to turn on that all star game and see an infield an infield full of Braves. Quite a proud moment for Ron Washington that's for sure. And Sal Fasano who deals with the catchers. Yeah those guys work hard. It's nice to see that when you put that effort in you get the results yeah. and. Good situation for everybody. Franchise record eight all stars this year. Grounder to third. Devers takes care of that wide throw but Casas taps the bag and it's a one two three top of the third. Back to the center of the diamond. Let's check out our John Foy and Associates strong arm feature, spotlighting Charlie Morton over his last four starts, a 182 ERA. Yeah, three earned runs or less in 15 of his 19 starts, 52% ground ball rate in his last four. That's always good, and holding opponents to a 291 slugging percentage in his last four starts. He had a streak of five straight victories that was snapped last time out against Arizona. On the 19th. In fact, if you go back to June 2nd, the only two losses for Charlie Morton were both against the Arizona Diamondbacks, once in the desert and once in Atlanta. Good start here to Yoshida. Buries that into the ground. He runs well. And Orlando tried to barehand it. That'll be a base hit all the way. You know, in your mind, that's how good Orlando's been at shortstop. Because you see that play, you know it's next to impossible, but you're almost expecting him to make it. Did everything he could, had to hit uh, field it barehanded, just was not able to field it cleanly. He made a great play to keep it at two to one to end the second inning on that hard hit ball off the bat of Devers. So here's Duvall who walked in the first. To third but that one's going foul. When Adam Duvall was with Atlanta he had one of his best games here at Fenway Park September 2nd 2020 
three homers and four plate appearances and the Braves won seven to five. What do you think of this park from a pitcher standpoint Tom. Um, I mean it's it's intriguing right I mean obviously you try to keep the ball to center field as much as you can try to keep it out of left field. <laughs> yeah. I mean the dimensions are just so unorthodox they are but that's kind of what makes it fun. Yeah. You know I mean look you're, you'll have definitely have some balls off the monster that would have been out or you know even over that would have been out but then you'll certainly get some balls out there in center field that would have been damaged anywhere else and they just kind of go out there to die so. It giveth it taketh away. Yep. Yeah, 420 to straightaway center, and then you've got Pesky's pole and right that's so short, right around 300 feet, and 310 down the left field line to the monster. There's a strike three and two. I do the first time. I remember, I the first time I pitched here, kind of standing on that mound and thinking, my goodness, that wall was close. <laughs> But at least it's 37 feet tall. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Three two now. Ooh. Coming inside. And the runners are at first and second. Yeah, it looked like a breaking ball that just kind of. Flew out of Charlie's hand a little bit, got a little bit around it, didn't get any spin on it. So Boston trying to add to their two to one lead here in the bottom of the third inning. That green monster is a big reason why Boston has led the league in doubles the last five seasons not counting 2020 so many balls off that wall turn into doubles. Shallow right center long run but Michael gets there throwing back to first may have a play double the morph and maybe a triple play. It is. Just how they drew it up. Well, if it wasn't cloudy, I would now be checking for a full moon. No <laughs> question about it. We have seen it all tonight. Michael started it. It's an 8 3 5 triple play.
Well what an ending to the bottom of the third and now Marcelo Zuna will lead off the fourth. That triple play was the first by the Braves since 2004 against San Diego. That's how rare that is. Yeah, I figured it had been a minute because uh, I couldn't remember it. And it's about as unorthodox of a triple play as you'll ever see. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering what both base runners were doing. <laughs> Ozuna one and two. And I guess in Duvall's case, maybe he just got a bad read and wasn't sure Michael was going to get to it. But I'm not really sure what Yoshida was doing after yeah. that. Well, I'm glad he tried to take third. It yeah. all, all worked yeah. out. I mean, great base running as far as we're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> the last time that the Red Sox hit into a triple play was 2017, so. Six years ago for them, but for the Braves, turning one all the way back to 04. Uh, that one landed right below us. I was, I was ready. That was coming right at me. <laughs> that was coming hot. It was. I was going to stay away from that one. I was not going to pull a smulty either. I can promise you that. How about that video you showed us before the game? Yeah, not one of John's best moments. <laughs> Two. 2 2 pitch coming here from Pavetta. If you have not heard or seen the video when John was calling a game here for Fox, a foul ball took an unfortunate ricochet in the booth and hit him south of the border. Yes, it did. It's on YouTube if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> Another one back here. That one was coming in hot. Now I might be ducking, but <laughs> I'm telling you, either one of those, I'm underneath the table, partner. Yeah, that went over to the Red Sox radio booth. So a battle here, Pavetta and Ozuna. Hey, again, this one almost went to the Braves radio booth. I hope Sean McDonough's protecting. Joe Castiglione over there. I hope he wasn't getting out of the way. Marcel is all over press row right now. There he straightens it out. Line drive single to center. Well, our Zaxby's indescribably good play. You guessed it. The triple play to end the third. Here it is, Tom. Yeah, you see, Michael got a beat on the ball. Duvall, again, had to have gotten a terrible read. So that's an easy out there. And then Yoshida somehow thought that once Matt Olson got the ball he could beat him to third. And that proved to be a bad decision. And he was out by a country mile. Yeah. Yeah between that the play in the first inning the pitch com device delay the 100 minute rain delay had a little bit of everything tonight. Grounder backhanded by Arroyo and it's a 4 6 3 double play. Well not a triple play but Boston gets a measure of revenge. Yeah not much you can do there hard hit ball by Rosario just good play by Arroyo good turn. And now Orlando takes a pitch low and away from Pavetta. And we talked about Pavetta and what he's done out of the bullpen. July 17th in Oakland, he went six innings, did not give up a hit, and struck out 13, which was a franchise record for a reliever. So they rely on him heavily, even though he didn't start tonight. Now I'm wondering if if I played today with some of my first inning issues if somebody would have suggested that to me. Yeah Tom come out in the second yeah, inning. Come out in the second <laughs> inning. Pitch the second <laughs> through the ninth. <laughs> but then 
The way my brain works, I would have, my response would have been, well, it's still my first inning. How do we get around that? <laughs> That's why they have sports psychologists nowadays, though. You can work through those things. <laughs> Low and away, and Orlando earns a two-out walk. Look at our Yellowwood bringing the lumber feature. Since the All Star break, Michael Harris hitting just a shade under 400. Hit safely in his last seven. Raises average 100 points since June the 1st from 170 to 270 coming in tonight. So, been on a nice roll. And there's a strike to start the at bat on a curveball from Pavetta. He did go around 0 and 2. Yeah, good, good slider there. Sorry, Brendan. Good finish on it. Back on June 7th, Michael was hitting just 163, getting that average up around 270. And then he stays alive. Another foul ball straight back remains 0 and 2. Fifty eighth pitch out of the bullpen here for Nick Pavetta. And there will be a 59th here in the top of the fourth. Yeah, spoiled a couple of good fastballs. Try to go out of the zone. Pitch before Michael was able to get to it. That one on the outer corner up. Able to spoil that one. Fourth straight foul ball. Breaking ball there. Definitely not where he wanted that pitch to be. See if he comes back with it, tries to throw a better one. Nope. Fastball high. Harris Chase, that'll do it. Well, we mentioned our friend John Smoltz in an unfortunate incident. Watch the ricochet.
4-2-1 Boston. Hey, alumni weekend, August 18th through the 20th, the Truist Park, presented by your local Ford dealer. It's going to be an alumni parade through the battery on the 18th. Home run derby competition, Hall of Fame induction ceremony for the Braves, alumni autographs on the 19th, and then a live broadcast of Behind the Braves podcast on Sunday the 20th. A lot going on. Find out more, braves.com slash alumni weekend. You're going to be in for that one, aren't you? I will be there doing some stuff, but mostly working. Yeah, you'd be in the booth. Yeah. First pitch here in the bottom of the fourth, fouled off by Arroyo. Are we stuck with Frenchie for those three games, too? Is that? I believe so, yes. Uh, that's unfortunate. I know. No, we'll get through it, though. <laughs> I I mean, Together. Yes. We can overcome. <laughs> Well, shaky first inning, but Charlie has settled in here. Both Boston runs in the first inning off three hits. And a 2 2 count here to Arroyo. Guy has battled a lot of injuries in his career, Arroyo, and more of them this year, limiting him to 58 games. He's been out since Tuesday with a jammed thumb, but tonight is his return to the lineup, and he grounds this to Austin Riley for the first out in the bottom of the fourth. Tom, we've seen this a lot from Charlie and Bryce this year. They may hit a speed bump early, but somehow you look up fifth, six innings, and they're they're still out there. Yeah, I mean, and that's what you love about them, right? I mean, look, you'd love to be clean and and easy every time you go out there, but that's just not the case most times. And you know, you're going to hit a bump in the road somewhere, whether it's early or middle or late. It's you know, how do you manage that bump? How do you come back from that bump? And I think to your point, both of those guys have just been so good at you look up and it's. You know, you're deep into the ball game. And even last time in the losing effort against Arizona, still went five and two thirds, gave up four runs. And before that, he had that string of five consecutive victories. This one just below us up here. I'm looking for a soft, lazy fly ball back here. The, these yeah, have been so rockets. far we haven't seen that. <laughs> <These> have been <laughs> center field. Harris, he's got it. So hard hit by Connor Wong, but no problem for the Braves center fielder. Here's a quick message now from Racetrack. Knock game day out of the park with whatever gets you going at Racetrack. Proud hometown partner of the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> Bottom of the order and Yu Chang the shortstop who flew out back in the second. Charlie Morton's going to get a rare violation here. So it's 1 0. -oh. And quickly 2 0. -oh. Four pitch walk with only three pitches thrown and with two outs Yu Chang will be at first base. Yeah that's unfortunate Charlie had a chance to have a nice quick clean inning right there. Kind of get his pitch pitch count back on track a little bit now two out walk which. Every pitcher hates doing extends the inning on him. He was in search of his first one two three inning can't get it so he'll have to face Jaron Duran at the top of the order. And he throws the curveball low and in. Hit. 
Runner goes. And it's into center field. So Chang's going to get third as well. Yeah, Chang got a good jump. Sean tried to make up for it. Short hopped him a little bit. Tough one for RC to come up with. Sean frustrated and now a 2 0 count here. And a potential tack on run 90 feet away for Boston. Boston wearing those City Connect uniforms tonight. They've had a lot of success in those things. They're 19 and 4 in these uniforms since they debuted them two seasons ago. Ooh, got the strike call, two and two. Yeah, borderline down, but nice frame job by Murph. Charlie trying to keep this a one run game. Ozzy under his glove. RBI hit Jaron Duran and Boston takes a three to one lead. Not a bad pitch outer third down. Moran just kind of came around it and Ozzy not quite able to get there. Not sure had he dove and got that ball he would have been had enough time to get up and get Duran he gets down the line fast. Yeah he'll take off Charlie knows that so he throws over. I think had the runner been on second base. You definitely see Ozzy dive and knock that ball to keep it from getting through but. I don't think it, I don't think diving there is going to allow him to get Duran. He's taken off for second, and he's stolen another bag tonight. I know he can run, but I'll tell you what; those are two of the better jumps I've seen any base runner get this year. I mean, I don't think Murph really had much chance. So a potential run in scoring position here now and Justin Turner the longtime third baseman for the Dodgers takes a fastball low. Turner is now mainly DHing with Boston they've even used him a couple times at second base I mentioned that's been a revolving door for them trying to figure out the middle portion of their infield. Oh, look out over in the Braves dugout. Yeah it's funny I heard some comments somebody played some second base and somebody asked him have you ever played much second base and he said well technically no but for the last five years with all the shifting that went on he said I was over at second base a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> but they put him there a couple times because they want his bat in the lineup for obvious reasons. Yeah he's just a professional hitter. You know, so good here. You know, maybe not hitting for the same average, but he's so good with runners in scoring position. 345 with runners in scoring position. He just has a knack for getting those two out or that runner in from third with less than two outs. He's earning a walk here. You saw Michael Tonkin is up and loosening. Yeah. Two. Sorry. This. This. Kind of the unraveling of the inning, really, here, right? Like we talked about two outs, nobody on, you got a chance for a quick one, and now a walk, a base hit, another walk, you've given up a run, and you've thrown 15 more pitches. So, kind of gotten the pitch, pitch count out of whack a little bit now for Charlie. And again, those 33 pitches he threw in the first inning, the most he's thrown in any inning this season. Good fastball there to challenge Rafael Devers. A 
another fastball. This one misses. Three straight fastballs and Morton is ahead of Devers here one and two. I think Devers keeps looking for that back foot breaking ball. Two outs one two pitch. Flares this to left and Eddie's got to take it on a bounce. RBI hit for Devers. And Boston now leads by three. That's a good pitch. I mean, that is a good pitcher's pitch. That ball is in probably off the plate. But Devers strong, able to fight it off the handle and get into left field for an RBI base hit. And Brian Snitker is surfacing from the Braves dugout here. Uh, Charlie had to sit around a long time waiting for this game to start. And he's going to exit in the fourth inning after the long rain delay giving up. The four runs and he's responsible for men on first and second. We'll be back to Fenway in a moment. Atlanta Braves baseball is brought to you by Lexus by Synovus number one in consumer banking satisfaction Southeast and by Yellowwood if it doesn't have this yellow tag you don't want it back in Boston four to one the Red Sox got two in the first now two in the fourth and they forced Charlie Morton out of the game so Michael Tonkin one of the long relievers for Atlanta will come in here. Pitched the middle game in the Milwaukee series his last time out. Inning in two thirds, couple hits, a run, couple strikeouts. And to your point, 17 of his 20 or 17 of his outings have been two innings or longer. So they're going to look for him to get a little deeper into this game here. He's facing Yoshida. Turner's out at second, Devers at first. Yoshida right now is the favorite for the AL Rookie of the Year, but there's a little asterisk by that. He just turned 30 years of age a couple of weeks ago, and he played a lot of seasons of pro ball over in Japan, seven of them. So they asked him about it. He said, well, look, I would take the award if they give it to me, but I don't feel like I'm a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wouldn't be the first one that's happened to, so, you know, it is what it is. If they're going to be considered a rookie, then take it and run. He hits clean up for Boston and that one almost hit him. Over in Japan Yoshida was a four time all star and a two time league batting champ and now he's hitting 316 this year. 
And that did hit it. So Tonkin a little out of control out of the bullpen and the bases are loaded. And Adam Duvall stands in. He has walked twice. There, the ball found his bat, and it goes right into the mitt of Orlando Arcia. And the Braves will certainly take it. But Boston tacks on two. But each home run hit by the Braves over the next three years, Truist is going to donate 755 bucks to the Braves Foundation's Henry Lewis Aaron Fund with a minimum commitment of a million. As of this morning, 187 on the homers and over $141,000 raised. This guy can certainly leave the park in a hurry, but he fouls that pitch off. Twenty three homers and a three thirty average this year for Ronald Acuna Junior. He went says Ryan Willis. Tried to hold up but. Unable to. Good slider there from Pavetta. In his fourth inning of relief work after John Schreiber was the opener for one inning. And that's a strike, and Ronald knew it. Yeah, Ronald looking for something else there. You don't see him take that fastball very often. So he's 0 for 3, and now Ozzy stands in. Braves got their lone run in the top of the first had a possible rally squashed on a questionable call on a line out double play to second. And since then it's been all Boston. Rounder to first, and Casas takes it himself. Let's get a quick message here from Delta. On behalf of our Atlanta based crew, go Braves. Delta, official airline of the Atlanta Braves. Austin Riley, one for two. 
Sixty seventh pitch out of the pin here for Pavetta. And Riley fouls it back. Pavetta last two years as a starter for Boston mixed results right around a four five five ERA record right around five hundred as we mentioned he began this year as a starter really struggled. But since going to the bullpen he's had a lot of success and he's holding Atlanta. To one run here. Braves also knew Pavetta from his time with Philadelphia. He faced the Braves 11 times when he was with the Phillies from 2017 to 2020. And his 0 2 to Riley is fouled off. in the air too high and Duran camps under it for the third out a one two three top of the fifth for Pavetta He's in their bullpen here in the bottom of the fifth. Speaking of the bullpen, let's take a look at our Alpha Insurance best coverage feature. The bullpen numbers, even though at times it may seem shaky, Tom, they've been really good. Well, they have. I mean, it's not, not always um, without some stress, but uh, despite all the injuries, saw the numbers. Braves' current bullpen has four guy, only four guys from the opening day roster, so they've dealt with a lot of injuries. But despite all that, bullpen has a 2.87 ERA in the last 40. So they've gotten the job done. The big reason why the Braves are sitting here with such a great record and 11 and a half games up in the NL East. Casas hits this out to shallow right center and he hit it in the perfect spot. It's like a high pitching wedge that he dropped right in there for a leadoff single. Michael got a great read on that ball. You know those those you always look to see if the outfielder breaks back first and he didn't. But I don't know if he saw it very well in between. Yeah didn't get a great jump now Arroyo that bullpen though is ever changing as we found out over the last 36 hours right <laughs> Kelly. 
Yes, yes indeed. And Alex Anthopoulos always looking to add to the pitching depth, especially here before the deadline. But Yanni Torinos off waivers from the Rays. He's been standing in the dugout, just kind of taking it all in tonight with some of the other starters around him, guys. Um, also adding Pierce Johnson from the Rockies, uh, righty, and then a lefty, Taylor Hearn from the Rangers. That was for cash considerations, but they are all here. The other two out there and available tonight. So Skip could turn to them if he needs them. Meanwhile, Acuna comes in to take this off the bat of Arroyo. And here, graphically, is a look at Chirinos, Hearn, and Johnson. And, you know, these are guys that may not have the best numbers, but there's a reason that Alex Anthopoulos went and plucked them. He believes in these guys, and hopefully they can help out the Braves bullpen. Yeah, I think particularly in, in Hearn and Johnson's case, Hearn, you know, another lefty gives you a little bit of depth out there from the left side, which, you know, with A.J. Minter being down, obviously is is an issue. And then for Johnson, a guy would swing and miss stuff. And, you know, they were looking for a guy from the right side with a little bit more swing and miss stuff. And when you look at his numbers, maybe not the greatest, but when you dive into him a little bit, when he got away from course field, he was pretty good and, and as I've said I don't know too many pitchers that have gone to Coors Field and gotten better so I think a change of scenery from there might be a good thing for him. Yeah absolutely that's a big reason that his numbers were inflated. Single up the middle rounding second Casas is heading for third and Boston trying to add on here they've got him at the corners. You guys in talking about Pierce Johnson I thought he had the funniest remarks today and talking about how thank goodness he doesn't have to face this Braves lineup again <laughs> how insanely good they are and he goes I was ecstatic to be joining this team and having the kind of defense behind me that this group brings but he said when they were in Atlanta I loved his remarks he goes we were running to the bat racks to get out of Atlanta that's how badly they, they did not want to continue to face this team so I know he's really really stoked to be over here and hopefully can contribute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you get better just by not having to face him anymore, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good point. I mean, the Braves just dominated that three game series. Meanwhile, the Boston Bats, they are swinging it well tonight. Another run home, and they take a five to one lead. Yeah, Michael's. Location from pitch one seems to be off a little bit at the moment. See if he can find something here. Well, Boston is averaging a little over five runs a game, which is top five in Major League Baseball. And they've got five right now with runners at first and second with one away. Duran fouls it. To the third base seats. Of course, with the acquisition of those pitchers, everybody keeping their eye on the August 1st date, that is when the trade deadline comes. Interestingly, it's when the Angels are in town, and so many people wondering what will happen with Shohei Otani. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. You know, I'm sure the Braves, you know, you look at this team and, you know, you think, well, good pitch there by Tonkin. There's not a whole lot, you know, you would do to get better, but I think Alex and the rest of the crew, you're always looking to get better. I don't care how good your team is. And, you know, to his point on some of his conversations or, or, things that I've read you know you're to some extent always worried about the what if you know what if somebody gets hurt and you know the Braves have had their fair share of injuries this year they've had their fair share going into the postseason in past years so I think there's that sense that number one you can never have too much depth right and number two yeah you're always looking you know I don't care how good you are you don't have the perfect ball club necessarily right so I think they're going to continue to see what's out there and if something makes sense I wouldn't be surprised but they're in a really good position where if they don't do anything more they're still going to be the odds on favorite right and and like I keep saying you, you're you're getting a quasi deadline blockbuster in a couple of days hopefully getting Max Reed back 
you know you've done all this all year without him and without Kyle Wright so those are two potential huge pieces that are coming back into the fold. Yeah Max getting closer and closer no timetable right now on Kyle Wright he has not started any rehab assignments or anything like that. Boston meanwhile that's a, a crew that could use starting pitching we've documented their issues there. But their lineup has been solid as we've seen tonight. Hammered but this one's going foul. Goodness that thing was crushed. Yes it was another. Missed location slider. Michael spiked a couple tried to make an adjustment there and threw that one down the middle so he doesn't want to throw that one again. Two men on two men out and a two two count here to Justin Turner. Foul back. Boston has scored five unanswered. Now to play again. That would have been a good one for the booth. Yes. That didn't have the exit velo yeah, no. that the previous ones did. Two two. Just off the outside edge, Tonkin pumped in a 96 mile per hour fastball. They've got the wave going here at historic Fenway Park. Runners go, and they'll do it again. Justin Turner his first year in Boston after being with the Dodgers since 2014 two time all star out in L.A. Awaits a 3 2 and we'll do it once more. When Turner was with the Dodgers he was a thorn in the Braves side. And tonight. He's singled, he's flown out, and he's walked. And been a tough at bat every time he's been in there. Yeah. Not an easy guy to retire, that's for certain. Hit in the air to left center. Harris is over. Camp center it for the third out. Another run home, though, and it is five to one Red Sox.
Next at Fenway, Matt Olson is our Georgia Natural Gas Greener Life Impact Player. This season, look at his ranks among the National League. Homers, RBI first. They're only brave to lead the National League in home run and RBI in 162 full game season. Hank Aaron in 1966, 44 and 127. And Andrew Jones in 2005, 51 and 128. Some pretty good years by those two. Yeah, very good. And Matt is on pace to better that 51 home run mark that was set by Jones back in 05. He's walked and grounded out so far tonight. Braves 32 of their wins have come at home and 32 on the road. Those 32 road wins tied with the Baltimore Orioles for the most in Major League Baseball. Yeah, typically you're trying to take care of business at home be 500 or better on the road and the Braves have taken care of business both home and road. Yeah on pace right now to have the best road record in franchise history. Olsen golf sis out into left center. The best road record currently for the Atlanta Braves through a full season, Tom, 1993. You would remember that. 53 and 28 that year on yeah. the road. Yeah, I remember that. That was the big comeback, the phenomenal second half that we had. After or the uh, press box fire, right? Our most recent <laughs> Hall of Fame uh, inductee now, yeah, press box fire. That was when we got Freddie. Yeah, congrats to Fred. I know you were obviously excited to see him finally go in. Yeah, I thought it was long overdue, but you know, I guess that's the beauty of the, the Veterans Committee with the Hall of Fame. They got that right. One of, one of those guys I just could not figure out why he just wasn't getting the love that he deserved. I mean, clean up hitter everywhere he went, anchored every lineup he went into, and played good defense and you know the numbers were there so. Thrilled for Freddie. Pavetta's fifth inning of work here out of the pen. Bounce foul stays 0 and 2 to Sean Murphy. Sean chased a slider in the dirt for the second out. Five strikeouts for Pavetta now. Join us August 1st as the Braves honor the man we were just talking about, Fred McGriff, for his induction into the Hall of Fame. There'll be a special pregame ceremony. The first 15,000 fans through the gates will get a Fred McGriff Hall of Fame bobblehead. It's going to be a great night. Braves.com slash promos to secure your tickets. Ozuna high in the air and this one angling foul. Is there enough room? There is barely. Yoshida's got it and it's a one two three top of the six.
All right, Xfinity Game Changer feature. We were talking about the Braves, how good they've been on the road. Last 25 seasons, winning percentage-wise, fourth best in baseball. Yeah, and there's still work to go to catch some of those teams ahead of them, but how are they doing it? Best road ERA and road OPS. And they've outscored their opponents, plus 85 run differential on the road. Next closest team is Texas at plus 64. Mm. But right now, it's the Red Sox with five unanswered runs. As Devers takes a huge cut and misses. Last year the Red Sox finished six games under 500 missed the playoffs this year you look at the NLE or the AL East and it's it's strange because you see the Orioles at the top and the Red Sox and the Yankees even though they're <laughs> above 500 they're at the bottom. Yeah it's uh, you might look <laughs> at it and say wait a minute. It's the uh, upside down world there this year, but we haven't had any homers, but we have had a lot of these just high lazy yep. fly balls. But both the Red Sox and Yankees, as we were saying, they're right there in wild card contention, and there's obviously still a long way to go. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think obviously they're. Uh, trying to continue what they're doing, try to get themselves in a position to get one of those wild card spots and then. Who knows? You know, it's all about getting your foot in the door, and once you get that opportunity, what do you do with it? So we've talked a lot, Tom, about the Braves in the last couple of years, how they did not get off to good starts, flipped things around in June, and then after the All Star break. So certainly it's been done before. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it. it so much of it depends on obviously where, where what kind of hole you've dug yourself right and you know like we talked about with the Red Sox on the one hand yeah they, they've had they've had a great July but they've not met, been able to make up any ground on Baltimore but they have gotten themselves more into the thick of it in the wild card thing so you know you kind of focus on your, yourself on your immediate sites which are get yourself into that wild card mix. But that's the problem if you get too many teams between you and where you want to go you can get on a hot streak but if two or three teams match you you can't go anywhere. One thing's for sure Baltimore is having a whale of a season. Single the other way for Yoshida he's got two hits tonight. Yep, Braves had him shaded a little bit towards shortstop on that third base line. Austin was over and just shot it right there in that vacant spot. Perfect pitch to do it on. Fastball up and away and just went with it. Didn't look like a rookie, and that's because he kind of isn't, even though he is. <laughs> one on one out. And the former Atlanta Brave, Adam Duvall. Another high fly ball. And another catch for Michael Harris. That triple play that Michael started earlier that went 8 3 5. It was just the second 8 3 5 triple play in Major League history. The first was turned in 1884 <laughs> by the Boston Bean Eaters. Formerly. Bravo's yep. organization. Yep. How about that? Came so, full circle, right? Yeah, so we thought it was rare and it was extremely rare. Throw on to first, retires the side. We head to the seventh at Fenway Park.
Nugget, and you heard the guys talking about the triple play in the third inning. Let's take another look at the 8 3 5 triple play. Only the second time in the history of baseball, and boy. That's some beautiful defense right there. What you didn't catch at the very end of this, all three of them kind of running into the dugout right here. Orlando Arcia had the ball, but they started fighting over it because Michael Harris felt like he deserved it. He wanted to keep it right on his mantle. But then there's Matt Olson saying, buddy, I'm the one who then got the final out. So, and Austin's like, yeah, but I caught it, you know? So I don't know who's going to end up with this, but I do know Orlando had it, guys, and he... He hit it. I'm not supposed to know where, but I do. <laughs> I think maybe Masataka Yoshida <laughs> should get it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, who do you guys think gets, should get well, to go home with I, it? Well, I know if they were all brothers and they got in a fight, they'd be telling their parents <laughs> that Michael started it. Yeah. So maybe he should get it. <laughs> First pitch here in the seventh is an innocent ground ball to the shortstop, Chang. And Eddie is out. Well, whoever gets it, piece of baseball history, that's for sure. Meanwhile, Blyer is in. Braves probably happy to see somebody other than Nick Pavetta, who was great through five innings, not giving up any runs, and now Blyer on. Yeah, two scoreless innings last time out Saturday against the Mets in game one. Three scoreless innings since coming out the 15 day IL. But you're right, Braves are happy to see Pavetta out of there. We've talked about how Boston only has three starters right now, but. I think maybe their formula of using an opener and bringing Pavetta out for five or six innings, he, he's in, in a sense another starter well, for you. Like you say, right? If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm thinking that Pavetta's next time out will start in the second inning. Orlando has not been retired tonight. He singled and he walked. There's a strike three and two. Hey, stay tuned for the stretch fueled by Georgia Natural Gas. Those guys are going to be talking more about that triple play that the Braves turned earlier. Three two hit pretty well to right center field. On the run, reaching up and grabbing it, Duvall. Kelly mentioned those guys in the dugout arguing over the triple play ball. Here's a look at it. <laughs> I want it. I want it. What was Austin doing? He had it. Orlando wasn't even a part of the play. Exactly. What, like, what, what did he do? <laughs> I love you Orlando but that <laughs> definitely shouldn't go on your nightstand. This guy has a strong claim for it. Weekly the other way. Wide throw by Devers. It looked great until the throw and Michael Harris will reach for the first time tonight. Yeah it was a do or die play for Devers with Michael speed and. Tried the spinorama, but location was just a bit off. Too dizzy after the spin. So Michael at first, and the Braves go back to the top of the order. It is a single for Harris. It seems kind of like kind of a blah game right now for the Braves, but I'll tell you what, one swing here from Ronald. All of a sudden they're right back in this thing. Inside. Well, the Braves had all those games in a row with a home run. And they had that one without. Breaking for second is Michael. Throw into center field and Michael's going to take third as well.
Well, I think Colton Wong Wong may have been a victim of his own success back there on that throw. He had no chance. And somehow decided he was going to try and make something of it and nowhere close on the throw and nowhere close on the pitch to Ronald. So two on and Alex Cora coming out of the dugout here. And he makes the call to the bullpen so it's a brief stay for Blyer. In a 5 1 game here in the top of the seventh. In the seventh, take a look at our Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud. So, since 2020, the Braves have hit 24 home runs against Boston. A lot of those over the monster could sure use another one here, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, over the monster, right field, center field, I don't care, but we could uh, definitely use one right here and turn the table a little bit. Well, the guy coming up had the big home run Sunday to win the series in Milwaukee. It was a three run homer and the Braves would win it four to three. This came in the eighth inning. That one to left center his 23rd of the season. And now he steps up here with runners at the corners facing a familiar face to the Braves and Chris Martin. I'm going to put the whammy on Chris right now. Okay. 15 consecutive scoreless outings, third longest streak of his career. I mean, usually when we say those things, yep. right? Something There's goes, the jinx. There we go. So, <laughs> with the Braves 2019 to 2021, of course, part of that World Series team a couple of years ago. Ozzy took a home run hack. I'll try to put a double whammy on their reliever here. Boston, the starting pitching, they may have woes there, but boy, their bullpen has been solid, especially this month. Big reason that they're on this run. 0 oh 2. As the starters this month have only averaged three and two thirds innings pitch, the bullpen has been. Carrying a lot of the water here over the last few weeks. Ronald breaks for second. They'll throw down there safe. He extends his major league lead in that category. Good jump, strong throw by Wong there, but Ronald just got in. Well, Homer would be nice, but a single to cut this deficit in half would be great, too. Yeah, that'd be just fine.
Missing inside. Two balls and two strikes. Oh, Martin wanted that pitch and it might have been a pitch. It, it was close. <laughs> it was close. <laughs> Martin, the big righty, 6'8, 215. 2 2. Got it. Fastball upstairs. And the Braves strand a pair in scoring position, and we head to the stretch. Top of the seventh, so still a five to one game. Joe Jimenez now has been summoned out of the Braves bullpen for the bottom of the seventh inning. 35 games on the year, great ERA, great strikeout to walk ratio, and on a roll, one earned run in his last 10 appearances. Hold them right here. Yeah, give the offense a chance. Facing the bottom three in the Red Sox order Arroyo, Wong, and Chang. Arroyo had an RBI single back in the first. He is grounded out and then he flew out in the fifth inning. He's one for three. Big article in The Athletic about the Red Sox the other day talking about how they have four middle infielders and they needed to let one go before the trade deadline. Well, the Royals, one of those, are keeping him. The guy they let go was Kike Hernandez, was traded to the Dodgers just before the game started tonight. Long run for Ronald, and he runs out of real estate. Yeah, been a struggle for Kike, Kike this year. Hadn't hit much. It's typically a really good defensive shortstop, struggled defensively, so. Maybe a change of scenery. He had some good years in L.A. with the Dodgers, so now he gets a chance to go back there and try his luck. And that gives Arroyo more opportunities at second base. Swing and a miss. Jimenez got it. Good change up there. Swung right over the top. Fooled him with the speed and the movement. And now Connor Wong. Boston, after the Braves got one in the top of the first, they bounced right back. They got two in the home half, two more in the fourth, and then another in the fifth to get us to this five to one score. Good slider there from Joe Jimenez.
Swing and a miss. Joe Jimenez feeling good out of the pen. Yeah, right, those are three pretty nasty sliders. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Similar to the changeup, he got a Royal one in the sense that those guys are missing location and speed. And now Yu Chang, who had an RBI single his last time up. These two teams have played a lot since the start of interleague play back in 97. 89th meeting since then. And for the Braves, that's by far the most that they played an American League team. The next closest, Toronto, they played them 64 times, but 89 games against the Red Sox. Swing and a miss. That time a fastball one and two. Press box. Eleven sixteen here locally. If you're tuning in, wondering why the game's still going, there was a long rain delay at the start. It was supposed to be 7-10 first pitch. Turned out 8-50 when we got this thing rolling. Did he go? Yes, yes he, he did. did. Joe Jimenez having a little Boston K party. Struck out the side. Friday against a familiar team that the Braves just faced in Milwaukee. Brewers coming to Atlanta. It'll be over on Ballet Sports Southeast and the Ballet Sports app. And it is the Friday night showdown presented by Kaiser Permanente, 6:30 Eastern. That'll be a good series. The series up there in Milwaukee was entertaining, so it should be another good series. This just a two-game set here at Fenway Park. The Braves right now down five to one as we go to the eighth and Joe Ellie Rodriguez is out of the pit. Riley Olson and Murphy to face the left hander. First pitch line but into the mitt of Devers. And the Braves running out of outs five left in a four run game. Punch. 
Rodriguez with a fastball in there to start off the at bat with Matt Olson. Yeah, his numbers aren't great, Rodriguez, but since he's come off the IL, five outings, been scoreless. Five innings pitched, three strikeouts. Retired 15 of 17. And a good start to the Olsen at bat here. Last year he started the season with the Yankees and was traded to the Mets. Only the 16th trade ever between those crosstown rivals. And now here in Boston. Popped out of play, stays 0 2. Slider away, a ball and two strikes. Did not go, according to Andy Fletcher, the crew chief. Mentioned that the Braves they had those 28 straight games for the homer from June 10th to July 16th. Then were held without one to break the streak, but the next game they've hit one, they've hit one in every game since. But homerless tonight. In a 5-1 game here. And really for either side hasn't been a close call for a home run. No. No homer but a single to center for Matt Olson. Good at bat there by Matt. Took some tough pitches, fouled off a couple good ones, and got one up out over the plate. Lefty on lefty, left-handed hitters love that pitch up over there. Nice base hit. Sean had the only RBI for the Braves back in the first inning with a single. First All Star season of his career. And he takes an 0 1 down and in. Murphy high to shallow left. And Yoshida's got it two away. Let's get a quick message here from our friends at Texas Pete. Welcome to the tribe. The Texas Pete tried and true. Texas Pete sauce like you mean it. Well speaking of homers Marcelo Zuna's only three home run game in his career came in this ballpark September 1st 2020. Takes a strike there 0 and 1. And then Adam Duvall now with the Red Sox of course hit three the very next day on September 2nd as an Atlanta Brave. Those two guys remain the only teammates in Major League history to have three homers in back to back games. Well we could use just one right here. We'll take it. Or another base runner anything yeah. to keep a possible rally going Travis Darno has grabbed the bat and moved into the on deck circle. Two and two.
All right, this guy 92 93 sure seems like he's throwing harder than that. It does. He's thinking the same thing, Tom. Eighty seven there on the changeup takes care of Marcelo Zuna and it stays a five to one game. Time for Page stitch pitching decisions. And Days Bell Hernandez struck out the side in his major league debut Sunday in Milwaukee. What a start to his big league career. He's getting ready to come back out here for his second ever major league appearance. And for more on Days Bell, let's go down to Kelly Kroll. That was pretty cool. Had a chance to catch up with him this afternoon and say, so what did you think? And he said, it was even more incredible than I could have dreamt. And he said, I always pray before I get started and I honor my mother. And I took a little extra time because my heart was racing so fast. He goes, but once I started pitching, it was just like any game before. But I thought it was cool. I don't know if you guys heard Bryce Elder mention the last time the two of them pitched in the same game they combined no hitter for double a Mississippi elder two excuse me seven innings um, and days bell through two and he goes he was 97 to 99 the whole time so he's been impressive so far guys yeah those two now reunited here in the big leagues and what a start for Hernandez let's see if he can keep that rolling facing top of the order for Boston and Jared Duran. Duran had an RBI single back in the fourth. But well, one thing's for sure, he brings a live fastball out of that bullpen. Yes, he does. And I think that was obviously what, you know, the results aside, but part of what everybody was so impressed about was the stuff. Fastball here is hit high to left center. We have had some skyscrapers tonight, but nothing near the fence. Well speaking of the three strikeouts Sunday if you go back to June 30th which for Hernandez spans time at double A triple A and now the major leagues he has struck out 20 of the last 28 batters that he has faced. It's a good ratio that <laughs> is exceptional. I don't care what level you're pitching at. Justin checking on Sean Murphy, but he appears to be okay. Sean has taken a couple of hits back there tonight. He's fallen behind both hitters here, three and zero. Oh.
Hmm. May have been given a gift there. Yeah, sure looked like he caught the top of the strike zone and three O's next to automatic. That sure looked good enough. And now the three hundred million dollar man, Raphael Devers. That one is a strike at ninety five miles an hour. Oh two. Bounces in the slider. In the top of the ninth, the Braves will have the bottom three in the order schedule. Went around, yes. There's a strikeout for Hernandez, and there are two away. Good, good back foot slider there. Devers tried to hold up, wasn't able to do it. The pitch. Now the cleanup man, Yoshida. I'm not sure how much, if at all, time it would have mattered, but I, I do wonder. Top of the first, the way that that ended, unfortunately for the Braves, with a call that looked like it was missed, could have at least gotten. Two runs in the top of the first. This one hit well down the right field line. Just enough. Yoshida with a two run homer inside of Pesky's pole. And it's now seven to one. Yeah, there's part of the quirkiness of Fenway. Yoshida able to keep that ball just fair inside the line and into the seats. Yoshida heard me talking about maybe uh, things would have been different in the first inning with more runs. Yeah. So. No, I don't think there's any question it was a big momentum swing for the Red Sox. Now, you know, can't assume that things are going to unfold differently than they ultimately did but I don't I don't think there's any question it's a big momentum swing. And the Red Sox have scored all seven runs in the game since. It's also the first run that Daisbel Hernandez has allowed at any level since May 3rd. Behind home plate, Sean will give it a peek, but it's six rows deep. That gets off of Matt Olson and out into right field. And Duvall reaches for the third time tonight. Right off the end of the bat, nothing he can do about that. Ball took such a weird spin. I thought maybe it clipped Matt or his glove, but it did not. Just a clean single all the way for Duvall. Matt has this one though, and he taps on the bag. Two run over though. It's seven to one as we go to the ninth.
The ninth. Let's pause real quick here for a word from Zaxby's. Zaxby's Southwest salad is more than just a salad. It's a flavor fiesta. Ball came on in left field before Kevin Pilar pinch hits here for Eddie Rosario. A strike to start the at bat. Hey, suit up this season, MLBShop.com. Large selection of authentic caps, t shirts, collectibles, and more. Get your Braves gear, MLBShop.com. 0 oh and 2. Braves one run seven hits Boston seven runs 12 hits but even though they have 12 hits all nine of their guys have at least one hit in this ball game. they have spread the wealth and Rodriguez continues his strong outing out of the pen as he gets Pilar swinging. Yeah we talked about how hot the Red Sox were coming in and their record in July and they have shown that here tonight balanced attack great job out of their bullpen and this will bump them if it stays this way to 13 and 5 in the month of July and get them to 54 and 47. And the two game series will finish off tomorrow night that broadcast will not be with us. We will rejoin you Friday back at home for the start of the Brewers series. Cue ball shot foul down the first baseline. Hit ball here. Orlando with a line drive single out to left center. He's got two hits tonight. That ball was hammered. Over 100 miles per hour off his bat. And now Michael Harris. The strange things we saw tonight. What will be the most memorable? Probably that triple play, right? I mean, I gotta go with the triple play. Yeah. I mean, that's just not something you see very often. If it's true to form, I won't see the next one. <laughs> yeah. If you did not hear earlier, it was an 8-3-5 triple play going from center to first to third, and that's only the second time that's happened in the history of Major League Baseball. The other being in 1884. Harris takes a strike two and one. And the rain for the most part has held off since the game started. We had a couple of really light showers in the middle of the game, but nothing else. Well, Braves not going quietly into the Boston night here. Back to back hits there at the corners. Well, that's what you want to do. Try to get some traffic, turn it back over to the top of the lineup, and who knows what might happen. Michael fastball up and in and fought it off, and the bat went down a hero. Yes, it did. They'll replace the lumber, and they may be replacing their pitcher right now. At least buying some time for the bullpen as Ronald Acuna is coming up. And Kevin Jansen just started getting going a little bit, so he might get in a little bit of hurry up mode.
Ronald hitless tonight he did walk in the seventh and he's stolen two more bases. Only been 12 games this year. The Braves have not homered in, and they're two and ten in those games. Still no homers tonight. One and one to Ronald. One and two fouls another one off. A ball and two strikes Rodriguez deals Ronald laces it foul down the first base side. Change up there, a great take by Ronald. And now a 2 2 offering. Called strike at the top of the zone. Ronald didn't like it. Two away. Yeah, borderline. Got the benefit of the call. Braves down to their final out. Ozzie Albies switches over and hits from the right side. There's a strike from Rodriguez. It started tonight as a packed house with a late first pitch after the rain delay. A lot of the folks have since vacated as we are approaching 1145 here locally. But the Red Sox fans that are here on their feet. Ozzie shoots it to center. Duran is in. He's got it. And the ball game is over. Boston wins seven to one to start the two game series here at Fenway Park. Yeah crazy crazy night crazy start tough hanging around for the rain delay but just one of those nights where the brace had some opportunities weren't able to get some big hits had some opportunities early. Red Sox able to pitch out of some jams and they just kept adding on. Braves had all singles in this game only the sixth game this year without an extra base hit as I mentioned the 13th game without a homer and the Braves just 2 and 11 in those 13 games where they have not hit one out of the park. Our next telecast will be on Friday against the Brewers back at Truist Park and we hope you can join us then thanks to our entire crew especially with a long rain delay putting in some extra hours and we appreciate all of their hard work for Tom Glavin for Kelly Kroll I'm Brandon Gordon signing off from historic Fenway Park. Stay tuned now for the postgame show. It's coming up next. So long everybody.